Hassan Ferdis, journalist and renowned essayist. Hassan Ferdis studied English literature in Dhaka University, Bangladesh, and international relationship from Kiev University, Ukraine. He joined the United Nations Information Center in Bangladesh in 1982. He is working in the United Nations headquarters in New York since 1989. He is a columnist for the famous Bangladeshi newsletter The Daily Profile Malo. He translated two books in Bengali language. The titles of the published translation books are Bristika Nye Rupkotha and Nakhotro Putro. His book Noitakota and Shado is published by Bangla Academy and another book Proto Road is published by Prathama Prakashoni. Hassan Ferdis is currently living in New York, USA. Diaspora Literature Bengalis in North America Let me tell you first that literature has no separate branch or special classification named diaspora literature. In the literary stream that I am going to discuss here, the word emigrant signifies a location only. Wherever Bengalis went at home and abroad, they always carried art, literature and music with them. It is connected with their existence, literature and music are there in their DNA. Among Bengalis staying abroad, practicing literature is very old. I am reminded of Achal Prasad senator born in Dhaka this Amos lyricist spent almost his full active life in Lucknow, far from Bengal. There he took the initiative to form the Emigrants Bengal Literary Conference. Although in another state for a long time, Achal Prasad never considered himself an emigrant, he thought of himself as an integral part of Bangladesh. Even Rabindranath admitted that Achal Prasad headed a bright stream of Bangla literature. He joined the first emigrants Bengal Literary Conference in 1922, as the chief guest, in his own voice, he recognized the literary activities of the emigrant Bengalis. We are staying abroad for a long time, qualitatively our position is not different from that of Achal Prasad. For whatever long period we may stay abroad, we don't consider ourselves rootless. We are outside our country for a long time, but we carry our own land day and night in our memories and our consciousness. As a result when we write, our own land inevitably becomes the central subject. I guess that there are two reasons behind it. The life that we live abroad is never near our sensibility, our new country of selection we accept politically or practically, but its philosophy of life or logical experience doesn't come naturally to us. Another reason is that in all literature memory is a chief shelter. When a Bengali picks up his pen, his memories bring back his lost childhood or incomplete youth. The question is natural, is there any diaspora literature in the Bangla language? For convenience of discussion we can give a practical definition of the word diaspora apostrophe. The word is Greek, which means spreading of seeds. Living abroad after being banished from his own land, we can identify such people as people of diaspora, people without a country. The Hebrew Bible is considered the first diaspora literature of the world, because this book was written by Jews driven out from their own land. This basic definition of diaspora was later expanded. Not only those who were forced to leave their country, but also people going abroad on their own in search of a livelihood, or for any other reason are virtually part of the diaspora. In other words, those who live permanently outside their own land, are a part of this diaspora. In that sense those of us who are abroad, meaning living in this North America permanently and engaged in writing, are creating literature that is part of diaspora literature. Salman Rushdie, Amitab Ghosh, Zia Haider Rahman or Monica Ali, are all members of the South Asia diaspora, their writings reflect that diaspora. Although they are intercontinental in thought and experience, at the center of each one of them's meaningful literature lies the idea of homeland. Another matter must be settled before we enter the main discussion. There is a qualitative difference between exiled literature and diasporic literature. Before the 20th century, when self-exile didn't earn its cluster character, the diaspora member took shelter in one or more habitation, but internally their existence was collinear. They were citizens of the habitation they left behind, their waiting to return to that habitation kept them united. Each of them has a symbol of the fleeting life lived, a picture, a broken suitcase, an ornament inherited, which Edward said has termed intimate mementos of the past. The banished diaspora writer ceaselessly holds that memento in his created literature. In other words past memories and the longing to return home, even when that return is not logically possible, is even then planted at the center of diaspora literature. This idea of homeland is no abstract idea, 
it has a clear geographical character, and in most cases it centers around the writer's own city, village or residence. On the other hand, the diaspora members of the 20th or 21st century don't need to return to memories to gain the experience of homeland, return is no unreachable reality to him. Even the idea of homeland to him is nothing but a carriageable and transferable experience. The pain of absence he doesn't have to bear always, for him the alienation or separation from his chosen land creates a more powerful near crisis. For this reason in my judgment, the character of the diasporic writer of the 20th or 21st century is much more immigration-oriented than rootless. So modern diaspora is more mental than physical slash geographical. To point out the difference between the two, we may consider the case of Bengali poet Daoud Haider. Daoud is a banished writer, his exile is not chosen, like all exiled writers almost every mentionable poem of his contains eternal, waiting to return home and bleeding. Please note the following lines of a poem written during the first decade of his exile. O oh life, to make you meet happiness. I am waiting since long dash. An age is gone, hoping in. Kolkata even now. If someone took me to my fatherland with affection. Thirty years after this Daoud sadly weeps in his poem for the same eternal exile. On the stooped river bosom. The rainy sky and happiness oozes incessantly. In a cluster of love. Electricity stops. I hear only your name. Needless to mention this, your name is Bangladesh's, none else's. The exiled writer not only holds in his chest his own land he has left behind, but also permanently waits to return to his fatherland. The position of the modern Bengali diasporic writer is different, he has left his country willfully, and returning home is no shut door for him. In spite of that, while writing, he has to return to his same native land, like his inevitable fate. Iqbal Hassan is abroad for almost 40 years, first in the USA, then in Canada. He visits his homeland regularly. Yet when he writes poems, his ceaseless, endless lamentation is that why for which illogical wrath of fate, he is lying outside his motherland. Why have I come here leaving everything behind? This far? I was promised, the painting of moonlight will teach me. The white expanse of the full moon has forgotten its promise. Unbearable is this darkness, this hostility. The painting of moonlight. The exiled writer doesn't consider his exile inevitable fate, and for that reason he considers his new address nothing more than a temporary address. But a diasporic writer at a certain period accepts the truth that his new address is his only permanent residence, because his children are growing up there. The slowly receding motherland at the back haunts his memories, but in his memory box are many scenic poems of his new homeland. Since he is on self-exile, the life of his memories and the life he lives can have no conflict can have no contrast. But despite that a diasporic Bengali writer is not free from the guilt that the new land he has chosen as his homeland is a decision which really is a deception both with his homeland and his selected new land. Because he certainly knows that this foreign land, this living abroad will never be his own. Please note this poem of Shams al Manan, living in New York. In my family regularly there is. Soft moonlight. You won't listen to the crisp call of the hawker birds. Chirping or the boy running after the ball. His obstinate run. Like the quiet framed photo. Children will grow up. The neighbor's sick affection. Remains as a permanent shade on their soft faces. This land is of gold, endless crops and possibilities. But how much of that is yours? For some writers even a long life abroad is nothing but living abroad. In the life they live they are immigrants in every sense of the term, yet with their pen they constantly speak of that life, which is recovered from the pit of their distant memories. Shahid Quadri, one of the chief poets of Bangla literature, is abroad for almost four decades, all his memories and creations almost inevitably aim at and end in, even now, the homeland he has left behind. He has nothing more to say, from this sensitiveness he refrained for a long time from writing poems. Finally when after nearly thirty years he took up his pen, his poems became a nurse of his grief and wound. The only book of poems he wrote from New York, Carry My Kisses to Their Destination, that too is a bunch flowers offered in respect and love to his indestructible homeland. 
why he is in self-exile for such a long time, the end of which was not beyond his control, that worry and incapability hurt him always. So he tells himself, No exile is desirable anymore. From my personal village to my unfriendly city. From the collective bath of the pond to the lonely bathroom. From my own homestead to my rented flat. From this tasty shoal curry. To tasteless chicken soup and dinner rolls dash. No, no exile is desirable anymore. Please note that the poet is using the refrain no exile is desirable anymore in every stanza of the poem. Exile meaning taking refuge abroad, was desirable or acceptable once, but is no longer so. This anguish and sad utterance are there in every line of the book of poems, in every pore of its skin. We see the same sad anguish in the writings of Jayoti Prakash Dutta, another major writer of Bangla literature. The distant land, my own land, his book of prose, speaks of this lamentation without any hesitation. In the last fifteen or twenty years Jayoti Prakash, Dutta has written nearly a dozen book of stories, where he has only returned to his life of memories again and again. This is as if an endless, inevitable return, which is only alive in a writer's head and personal sensibility day and night, we find a kind of whose end in his book of memoirs, The White Wall of Childhood. In fact, in his staying abroad for four and a half decades, Jayoti Prakash has constantly returned to the transformation of his memories, of scenes seen with his own eyes, or in the change of his characters. In his books of stories like Return to Moonlight, Fly Away the Dark Clouds or The Water Nymph will certainly dance, the present is not fully absent, but even to understand the present he takes refuge in memories. Since most of his writings are symbolic, he speaks not directly but in signs, as a result most of the time he constructs the outline of reality swaying between memories and hypnosis. In Purabi Bashu's short stories too we find a return time and again to the life of memories. Her books of stories, Quarrel with Moonlight and Confined Breeze carry a proof of this statement. She is a politically conscious citizen, but despite her long spell of staying abroad, her new residence, new country stirs her very little. Not that the experience of her children is not there in her writings, at times she has used her experience abroad, as an ingredient of her literature, but her country and abroad, own country and foreign land, are two experiences which she is used to hiding in two completely different compartments. These two contrasting and opposing realities don't cause any special conflict or distress. Life of memories and life lived, other than these two ingredients, there is a third arrow in a writer's quiver. I shall call it the life felt. For a diasporic writer this third life, which is really a union of the life of memories and the life lived, gradually becomes his main shelter and support. The life of memories takes him backward, the life he lives plants him in the present. The life felt is born from these two experiences. Dilara Hashem is one of those writers who have consciously chosen their experiences abroad as a central theme of their literature. In the first two decades of her life abroad, the life of memories is central in her works. For example in In the Ears of Calmness or Coincidental. But as her emigrant's life became longer, she became more attentive to her lived life, other than dwelling in memories she used them to self-analyze her felt experiences. For example, her novel Outer Portion, Inner Portion. The location doesn't remain that important here, the felt experiences of life constructed with the coordination of life lived and life remembered, became more important. In the works of Fertis Sajidin, novelist and short story writer, this middle life or felt life becomes central. As we see in his novels, Man, A Digit of the Moon, or The Dream Room. Like him the characters created by him are also diasporic, but they are closely related to the current of events at home. Two clear streams of their life flow differently, but finally become the same current. It seems that the writer is confident about this truth that home and outside, own country and abroad, are outwardly not similar but inwardly same. Young writer Darpan Kabir, although an emigrant for a short period, tries to follow his diasporic experience in his novels, we can see, building a bridge of dreams between past and present, is another noted characteristic of that attempt. His waterfall is fully based in New York, but in the map of hurt, lonely and dreaming people he creates, each of them's destination is that impossible and unreal snatched away youth. A little different from this stream is Abu Rehan's emigrant sketch of two parts, New York of residence, and residing in New York, 
and Adnan Syed's About America. Created in the mirror of personal experiences these stories or tales are not only lifelike but have literary beauty too. The men and women they describe, to them life abroad is being hurt, bitten and grief-stricken. The dreams they hope to build in America are now utterly bad dreams. This main conclusion of both the books turns the romantic cover of emigration into leftovers. Similarly Tamazudin, Ludi has fixed Bangladesh as the ingredient of his daily self-discovery. In his book of poems, we had no, he has personal careful observation, as well as the Bangladesh he worships in dreams and awakening, he expresses his love and pride for her. This poet, like many other poets and writers living abroad, follows the current of events in Bangladesh with the attention of a political analyst and the broken-hearted self-torture of a romantic. A proof of this statement is there in his newly published poem, I am in a hurry, I am going. The young man is running. Fast. The chopper brigade is behind. People in rows are curious. Ah, the man will die. Let him. I am in a hurry, I am going. Who are coming out of the blind lane? Who gets affluent overnight? Who are cutting everything to pieces like a sawmill? Who are throwing away color brush pen paper? Who are coming out like robbers on the open road, so what? Last word, all Bengalis living abroad dream of a livable Bangladesh beside loving his or her country deeply and having unconditional loyalty to our struggle for freedom. We can unhesitatingly say that the literature they create hold that dream and hope. The life they live is not fully portrayed in this literature in most cases, we may regret. We can even come to a conclusion that emigration is a temporary reality to them. Inside these two is a heart-piercing pain, which is clearly present in their literature. Whatever we are writing abroad will fully merge with mainstream Bangla literature, I don't say that. But we shall ignore it in one stroke. I don't think such stupidity from anyone is acceptable. Translated from Bengali by Junaidul Haq